Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber. In this video, we've got probably my biggest ever unboxing from the cubicle.us. There is a lot of puzzles in here. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what all is inside. I am really, really excited for a lot of the things that are in here. Um, this is definitely my most expensive order I've ever made. I don't know about actual puzzles. There's just a lot of uh, pretty expensive puzzles in here. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to for pretty much everything that's in here. So let's go ahead and see what all we got. Okay, so got one thing. Um, are these just empty boxes? I think it might be. Yep. So these are just for packaging. Feels like there might be something in here though. Uh, yep. Okay, so we'll get to that later as well. As you can see, we have some black boxes, and so these are uh, very puzzle puzzles, and we have some clover cubes. In fact, all of the clover cubes, all of the clover puzzles, not cubes, that have come out. So there's one, two, three, um, four of them. I don't know, I can't remember if there's a fifth one or not. Um, yeah, there is, there's one more in here. Here we go. And then we've got more puzzles here. Just lots and lots of stuff. <laughs> wow, this is pretty amazing. Um, got one last, that's one thing here. And then one last thing here. And then um, the business card. So that is everything in the box. Let's go ahead and get this box out of here. All right, so where where do we even start with all of this? Um, <laughs> man, so um, first off, I'm gonna be doing an individual video about each of these um, Clover puzzles. Uh, I don't know about the other puzzles, but I do wanna do a little bit of a mini, mini series, I guess, for these Clover cubes. Um, so, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and open up these first, just to show them to you. Not really in much detail though, I'm going to save that for the individual videos. So the first one we have here is the Clover Cube Plus. So this is going to be a variation on the standard Clover Cube, which I have made a video about and I got in um, a previous order. So this is going to be very similar, it's just going to have some extra cuts. So here is um, my standard Clover Cube. This one has been re-stickered, so it has a white face and just some nicer shades. Uh, but this one has the stock shades that I'm pretty sure this one had when I first got it. Um, so there's no white side. But yeah, as you can see, there's just some more cuts in these pieces here and um, just more around the entire puzzle. So it's basically just gonna allow for more turns. So let's see, we could do a turn like that and then one like that maybe. And then, yeah, we could turn back like that. So now you can see we can separate this piece out with this one. So it's gonna make it um, basically more ways you can scramble it, more things to solve, um, more pieces to place in. So yeah, I'm excited to um, try and solve this puzzle. So yeah, that is the Clover Cube Plus. The next puzzle we have here is the Clover Dodecahedron. So as the name suggests, this is just a dodecahedron version of this Clover Cube idea. So here it is. Wow, this is a beautiful puzzle. It's very intricate, um, lots of small pieces. This looks really, really nice. So, as you can see, we can do some turning here. The turning's actually really smooth. It almost feels a little bit loose. I don't know if popping is gonna be an issue. But yeah, that actually moves pretty well. So, it just, um, just like the Clover Cube, there's two axes along each edge. So, can do some turns like that, just like you would on a clover cube. So this is just gonna be even more complicated than the standard one, because you've got now five edges around a single face and 12 faces. Wow, this is a very, very awesome puzzle. Once again, I'm gonna go more in depth with each of these clover cubes 
um, in their individual videos. So that is the Clover dodecahedron. Next up, we have the Clover icosahedron D1. So this puzzle is the icosahedron version of the Clover concept. And this is also my very, very first octahedron puzzle, or sorry, icosahedron puzzle in my collection and the first of many more to come. Wow, this is a, as well a very, very beautiful puzzle with a lot of very small pieces. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look like any of the stickers have come off. That's uh, really good considering how many tiny stickers there are. But yeah, this is a very, very beautiful puzzle. So an icosahedron is uh, the last platonic solid of which I didn't have a puzzle for. So the platonic solids include the tetrahedron with four faces, a cube with six faces, an octahedron with eight faces, a dodecahedron with 12 faces, and in the icosahedron which has 20 faces. So let's go ahead and just do some turning with these very, very tiny edges here that are kind of shallow, a little bit hard to hold just because um, the angle between the faces isn't too great because there's so many of them. But yeah, so it's a little bit hard to uh, grip this. And then once you get it to about there, then you can turn the other, um, the other edge. So the thing that's different with this puzzle too is that the edges don't extend all the way out to the corner. So you have this whole corner section here that can turn as well, just like that. Wow, that is, takes a little bit to get going. I hope I don't rub any of these stickers off because it takes a bit of force to actually move that. Um, I'll be careful with that for sure, but that's gonna add a whole nother level of complexity to this already complex puzzle. Wow, well, um, I'm excited to get into this a little bit more. Like I said, um, I'll be delving into this uh, puzzle a bit more in the individual video for it. So for the last two puzzles, we have the Clover Octahedron and the Clover Octahedron Fragmentation, uh, but let's go ahead and start with the Clover Octahedron. So this is the most recent of the puzzles to come out, and it is uh, almost the uh, last puzzle that will need to come out. We still need an uh, or a tetrahedron version to complete all of the platonic solids. So we've had a cube, um, now this octahedron, the icosahedron, and the uh, dodecahedron. Now we just need a tetrahedron, which is four-sided. Um, this puzzle is very, very large. I actually wasn't expecting it to be this big, um, but it's also a very beautiful puzzle. So this one is gonna have a more classic design where um, the edges go all the way out to the corner. So no corner that can rotate on its own this time. But yeah, we've got two, Oops, let's see if we can get this going. There we go. Two edges for a single face. That is really, really neat. So I think, you know, part of the main fun of these puzzles is just figuring out how they move and how they scramble. So you kind of need to learn some algorithms um, in order to scramble these puzzles, and that's just part of the fun of it. So the reason why this puzzle is so large, even though the pieces are pretty basic compared to some of the more intricate clover puzzles, is because of the clover octahedron fragmentation. So this one is a way, way more complicated version of the clover octahedron with a ton of different cuts. So you can already start to see it in there. Oh boy. Oh no. Ah, uh, the puzzle is falling apart. Hold on. Ah, a whole section just came out. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, um, yeah, you can see how many pieces there are here. Oh boy. Well, that's gonna be quite a pain to assemble. Well, I do want to show you this puzzle, um, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble it and come back, um, <laughs> and I can show you the whole puzzle, but you can kind of see uh, what it's gonna look like just on this half, so you can see all the different intricate cuts in there. So, I will be right back uh, after I'm done assembling this. All right, so I got the Clover Octahedron fragmentation back together, and I've gotta say, this is probably the most beautiful puzzle that I have in my entire collection. This puzzle 
is incredibly intricate and it just looks like it's going to be um, a pretty amazing to scramble and solve. So um, actual turning is pretty much just as good as the uh, regular octahedron. But as you can see, there's just a ton of cuts. So there's just a lot of pieces. So I'm sure I'm going to have to be very, very careful with it. So let's go ahead and look at um, a couple of the ways this puzzle can turn. Obviously, this is the um, standard way it can move. For example, we could uh, switch out this piece with this middle piece here, and then I could separate it like that. And then I could turn that around here and even move that in like that. So you can kind of see how things can start to get separated. It's um, pretty amazing. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very fun puzzle to solve. I um, I'm really really happy with all of these clover puzzles and um, like I said I will be going more in depth with um, the solving process and everything like that uh, in the individual videos for all these puzzles. Alright so let's go ahead and move on to everything else in the box. So first off here we've got a gear puzzle. This is from Calvin's Puzzle. This is a gear skew. Let's go ahead and open this puzzle up. So this puzzle came out a while ago. Um, it was one that I never got though. Um, so it was designed by Timur Epitrov. And yeah, gear skew. So I'm pretty sure you hold it by the outer corners or actually not. You can just hold it by this section and then turn the outer corner to move one corner just like a skew would. Awesome. Wow, that is really neat. Turning is very smooth actually. If you're going to grip this corner, which is like the smaller corner, then the corner that's going to be able to move is going to be this opposite one. So it looks like it's actually a four axis puzzle, um, which is pretty neat. So I don't think this is going to be super complicated, um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and scramble it up. Neat. So I don't really know how this is going to solve, but this looks really, really cool. Um, so I'm getting pretty close, uh, or I'm getting closer and closer to completing my gear collection. Um, there's, I think, one more gear puzzle in here. And, and then I'll be getting some more in probably about a month or so. And I will, um, hopefully, will be able to complete my gear collection at that point. So here we go. Here's the scrambled puzzle. Really awesome. So gear skew from Calvin's Puzzle, designed by Teamer. Next up, we have a pretty weird puzzle that I uh, that just came out a little while ago. I saw it on the main page of the cubicle, and I thought, hmm, that's kind of neat. So I figured I would get it and just see what it's all about. So this is a kind of like a floppy puzzle. It's like a one by one by three um, mirror blocks in a way, but as you can see, it actually has five sides, kind of. Um, so the center is like a Mega Mink center. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five sides. So it's a very weird design. I, I don't know if you could call it like a um, a one by one by three Mega Minx type puzzle because it's it's a square. Um, but yeah, it's just pretty interesting, and it also can do these kind of things which is weird because as you can see, there's not a proper angle for it to actually be able to move all the way up. So it looks like it can do some slight um, shape shifting, but in general, it's just gonna move like this. Wow, well, this is a very strange puzzle. So there it is scrambled. It's also got the uh, brush stickers just like a bump cube would. Anyways, next up, we've got the new Z cube Penrose cube. So um, the first time I saw the Penrose Cube was in Nathan Wilson's 30 Day 30 Build series. And interestingly enough, he's actually sending me the, the uh, first Penrose Cube that he made in that series. So I guess I'll have two of them. Uh, but that was, um, he agreed to send that to me before it got mass produced. So, um, but yeah, so the Penrose Cube, as you can see, it has three colors. And um, it has three colors because two faces have been connected together through the rounding off of one edge so then it's just one color and that's been done um, for three of the three of the edges so this is just a three by three shape mod but it looks pretty cool um, from certain angles and it's just an interesting design so just moving the puzzle 
it moves just fine. I'm sure it uses just a very basic 3x3 design. Um, yeah, fairly, fairly simple. So this is pretty cool. This is also going to be, um, I think, pretty easy to solve because you only have three colors. Um, so also since these edges can flip, I think you might be able to get OLL parity, but I'm not sure if, yeah, I'm pretty sure whichever side you solve, it's going to have one of these rounded off edges, which cancels the OLL parity. So another thing too is that you can kind of make different designs with it. So for example, I've just moved around a few pieces and I've actually made another one of the mods that Nathan Wilson did in his 30 day 30 build series, which is like the teardrop cube, where you just have one edge here and then three um, uh, rounded off edges, which kind of makes it look like a teardrop. So um, yeah, that's something you can do with this cube. And yeah, let's see, what did I, there we go. So. Yeah, this is a pretty cool puzzle. Let's just go ahead and scramble it up. Just another interesting 3x3 shape mod to add to the collection. And I don't really know what I'm going to do with this since I'm already getting one. I might uh, sticker mod it to make that teardrop cube. But I'm not sure exactly. So there we go. And so since it only has three colors, it is a little bit hard to get a scramble that looks like it's scrambled. Um, but yeah, so the Penrose cube. Pretty cool 3x3 shape mod. Next up here, we have a new non-WCA puzzle from Moyu. This is the Yilang Time Wheel. Um, so this is the Fisher Wheel of Time, basically. So the Wheel of Time was a really, really cool non-WCA puzzle that came out a few years ago. Um, it was basically just like a 3x3 that had some baby faces on it. So it was kind of like a cross cube, but a bit different. And so this is like a Fisher version of that with the top two faces that have been cut down so that they're actually level. So this is a really cool looking puzzle and um, yeah, let's just go ahead and turn it. So the turning is gonna be about the same as the regular Wheel of Time. So that is really nice. The turning is really awesome. And so then you've got turning along here. And then for these faces, these little faces in here move as well. If I can get one going here. There we go. So then they'll move up like that. So these faces are a little bit tricky to turn um, just because everything else is wanting to move around it as well. And then these faces can also kind of rotate, but the main way you're going to want to move these is basically just by bringing up here. If I bring up a section like that now by moving this, it's going to be easier to move around these uh, yellow pieces or even just moving up that. Now I've got a little something to grip. But moving these, moving these uh, smaller faces still is a little bit tricky no matter which one you're moving. Um, but yeah, this is going to solve, I think, pretty much the same, except that these pieces here have orientation. So I'm not sure if there's a way you can just, ro just rotate this middle piece. So also to compare it to the Wheel of Time from Moyu, um, it looks like the designs of the faces are uh, have changed quite a bit. So um, as you can see on here, the center piece is quite large and on here it's really tiny. Um, so but yeah, the same method uh, for solving applies here where you just have these outer faces that you can move. Uh, the problem with this design is that these middle layers were really, really thin and so it was kind of hard to grip them. So it looks like they've changed that on this on this puzzle, but um, yeah, in reality, this is pretty similar to this one. But yeah, this puzzle seems like it's gonna be really, really fun to solve. So let's just go ahead and scramble it up and scramble it like a three by three for a bit. And then we can start moving all of these middle faces around. Yeah, so there we go. There is the scrambled Fisher Wheel of Time. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next puzzle. So this is a Land Land puzzle. This one also came out not too long ago. So let's go ahead and open this up. I don't care about boxes. So this one is the Honeycopter. So this puzzle came out in conjunction with another puzzle that is an edge turner. Um, this one is a corner turner, so it moves in around like that. Um, that one I was gonna get as well, but it was out of stock. Um, but I will be getting that pretty soon because uh, the two puzzles, I, I feel like they just kind of go together, maybe just because they were released at the same time. But yeah, so this is a corner turning puzzle and is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of a ready cube, sort of just in the way it moves. And as you can see, it has like these heart shaped pieces in the middle, uh, which gives it a pretty unique look. The centers kind of look like flowers or 
clovers or something kind of like that. Um, but yeah, so this is a pretty basic puzzle. Um, I don't think it's going to be that tricky to solve. So let's go ahead and scramble it up. Um, yeah, there we go. There's just a pretty basic scramble. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Next up, we've got a puzzle from Chi, and this is the Twisty Skewb. So this puzzle looks really awesome. Um, so this is similar to the Twist Cube, like the Itons Twist and Fisher Twist Cubes, uh, just applied to a Skewb instead of a 3x3. Three three. Alright, so here we go. Um, this... These twist mods are really, really fascinating to me, and I'd like to get um, more of them. So it seems like they've been uh, become more and more popular in the modding world. So people are making twist 5x5s and like the twist 11x11 that Gregoire Fenning made. And now we have the twist skew. So you can kind of imagine that it's just been twisted um, 90 degrees as it goes up. So imagine if it was like an elastic skew that you just twisted. Um, and then it was stuck, like stuck that way. Um, yeah, but it still functions just like a normal skew. So it is a shape mod. And here we go. So this is what a face looks like. Yeah, so these are gonna be centers. These are centers, obviously. And then these are the corners. Very cool. So we'll just go ahead and mix, mix it up. So this is gonna solve pretty much like a normal skew, except that the centers have orientation, at least four of them do. And so in that case, you have to keep in mind your center orientation. And I don't know if you need an algorithm. I think you might just be able to do a whole bunch of sledgehammers in certain ways to get the centers to flip. That's basically how you solve the entire skew anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go. There is the scrambled twisty skew. Really neat. So the next puzzle that we've got in the box is this puzzle from Cube Twist. So if I remember correctly, this is um, the 5x5, the gear 5x5, 5x5 gear cube. So this puzzle was originally designed by Oscar Van Deventer. Yes, okay. So this is a white only puzzle. So here it is. Um, this puzzle only comes in white, um, no black version, and the stickers are painted on. So there's no actual stickers, it's just paint, and unfortunately it looks like this piece is cracked. Um, I don't know if that will affect the way the movement much at all. What I would like to do with this puzzle is paint it black and sticker it. I'm quite sure that Oliver sells stickers for this, um, so that might be possible. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn it. Ooh, whoa. That is pretty stiff. But ultimately, it doesn't feel like it has too much catching. And then this side also moves. So this is a 5x5 five five gear cube, even though it kind of seems like a 3x3 three three with just these middle parts in the middle, uh, because uh, technically it has one, two, three, four, five layers. Another problem I'm seeing is that the paint is chipping off already. So yeah, this doesn't seem like, you know, a very um, high quality puzzle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and want to get on um, stickering this from with all of our stickers as soon as I can but what I'm probably gonna do is just do a light sanding to each face to just brush off all of the paint and then actually paint it black so but what I wanted to do was a checkerboard pattern see I've heard mixed reviews about this puzzle I guess for some people the turning is pretty good but for a lot of people it's pretty bad um, so I wasn't expecting super great things out of the turning but this still seems like it could be a fun puzzle to solve. So here we go. There is a checkerboard pattern. The color scheme is pretty weird as well. Um, there is purple instead of white. And as you can see, it has Oscar's logo and the Cube Twist logo. So yeah, pretty interesting puzzle, I guess. Just doesn't feel like, you know, it was made that well. I can, I can kind of see why they didn't want to sticker it because there's so many tiny parts and that can be really difficult to do in a mass production setting. Um, but at the same time, this paint is just seems really low quality. And as you can see, it's just kind of chipping and flaking off. It's getting on my hands. Um, so yeah, not really impressed with this puzzle, but I think it could be pretty cool once I um, paint it black and sticker it normally. Anyway, let's go ahead and scramble it up. Something interesting is that really no matter how much you turn it, the gears don't stick out at all. So it's always going to remain as a cubic shape. All the, all these gears really do is just flip 180 degrees. They don't really um, flip any other angles. 
So the other thing too is that you can really only make 180 degree turns on this puzzle. So as you can see, these colors here are never going to um, exchange with each other. So yeah, so just like a gear cube, you can't uh, move it 90 degrees and then make another move. You can on the um, mix-up gear cube, but not on any other gear type puzzle. So yeah, anyways, that is the puzzle scrambled. Looks pretty neat. Don't know how tricky this one is to solve, but I guess we'll find out once I uh, attempt to solve it. So yeah, that's about it. Now on to the last puzzle, which is this. This is a pretty weird one, uh, but this puzzle actually comes from Diane. So this is the Diane Puzzle Ball. So there are, I think, five versions of this puzzle. I didn't want to get all five, um, but if I like this one enough, I might get the other ones just to see how different they are. Um, it seems like it's just a different in the way it's been colored, but might be wrong about that. So let's see, how does this move exactly? So I can feel pieces trying to move, but I don't know how it actually turns. Is it a face turning one? It seems like that's right, but I'm, I'm having to f force it quite a bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it is a face turning puzzle, okay. Or not really face turning, but it just kind of moves along these axes here. I know some kind of thinking of it like this whole thing being one face, but yeah, um, this, huh. The turning is, I guess it's okay once you get it going, but actually starting a turn is pretty tricky, especially on like a new face here. Whoa, this one's pretty bad. Okay, so yeah, turning's not great. I don't know, I haven't really seen much about this puzzle and I was just kind of curious to see what it actually was. So, I don't think there's any other way it can move really. It doesn't seem like it, but yeah, that puzzle is, it is, you know, it's, it's actually not that bad once you get it going, but just starting a move is pretty hard. And it seems like it's just gonna take some breaking in. I don't um, know if I'll be able to lubricate it. I don't know how to take it apart. The whole thing's pretty hollow, as you can see. You can see right through it. Yeah, it's just a really weird type of puzzle. Interesting puzzle. Well, let's just go ahead and mess it up. It looks like... Yeah, to make a full turn, you have to connect... Um, actually, how do you make a full turn? Is that a full turn like that? Oh yeah, it is, okay. Yeah, you have to turn pretty far for a full-on move. Um, so, I thought it was originally, I thought it was just like restoring the stars, these like star patterns in the middle. But like, even if you restore this star here, it's not lined up everywhere else around. So you have to keep going a little bit further. And there's a full turn, like that. Yeah, so I'm, guess, I'm just kind of trying to understand how the axes work and like, just how the whole thing kind of functions. It's a very strange puzzle, um, but pretty cool, I guess. It's um, I'm it's weird because I can't exchange these pieces with these colors, so I'm just I'm just messing up blue with green and green with blue, and the other parts are kind of moving moving around it. So, well, there we go. That's about as scrambled as I uh, want to get it right now, but. Um, this is a pretty weird puzzle. I don't really know what to say about it. It's pretty cool, but yeah, that about does it for this unboxing. So we got quite a bit of stuff. Um, so let's just go ahead and bring it all in here. So this is just the uh, non-clover stuff, which already in itself is quite a large unboxing. Uh, but then you add in all these awesome clover cubes. All right, well, there we go. This is uh, everything we got in the order. So yeah, a really, really awesome order from the cubicle. Um, lots of awesome stuff that I can't wait to play around with more. Um, yeah, and so like I said, all the clover cubes will be getting their own video. But yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be really uh, be making more videos about these puzzles. Maybe if you guys wanna see like some solves, maybe on this guy, this one would be a pretty fun solve video. Um, then definitely be sure to let me know. But other than that, that is about it for this cubicle unboxing. I know you guys really enjoy these huge non-WC unboxings, so I am gonna be making them more often. And I really wanna be able to make more non-WC videos that are a bit longer, uh, more types of like solve videos and stuff like that. And you guys seem to really enjoy the, the videos about, you know, more like twisty puzzles and just like stuff that isn't really speed cubes. But yeah, that is about it for this giant non-WCA cubicle unboxing. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. Links to all of my social media pages, my Patreon, and my merch store are all linked down in the description below as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.